On May 17, 2023, a 28-year-old pilot was killed when his banner tow plane crashed onto a street in Hollywood, Florida, bursting into flames. The Piper PA-25 had just picked up its banner when it began flying low and nose high, struggling to climb. Minutes later, it spun out of control and slammed into the ground. The aircraft was intact, the weather was clear, so what went wrong? The truth is that this routine flight hit a deadly aerodynamic trap, and the pilot didn't realize it until it was far too late. Here's why. To understand how this happened, we need to look closer at the aircraft, the pilot, and the company behind the flight. The aircraft at the center of this crash was a Piper PA 25-2-35 Pawnee, tail number November-4-3-0, Alpha Bravo, originally designed as a rugged agricultural workhorse. Built in 1966, this particular plane had been repurposed for banner towing, a job that pushes small aircraft to their aerodynamic limits. While the Pawnee is known for its strength and reliability, its performance becomes far more delicate when flying at low speeds with the added drag of a large banner. In this configuration, even slight misjudgments in pitch or power can have severe consequences. The pilot, just 28 years old, had been working for Aerial Banners Inc. for only five weeks, though he held a commercial certificate and had accumulated around 324 total flight hours, he had logged only 15 hours in the Pawnee, a critically low amount of time in a highly specialized aircraft type. He had completed the company's banner tow training, but real-world experience was still limited. That lack of exposure can be dangerous in a field where margin for error is razor thin, especially when a pilot must react quickly to subtle aerodynamic warnings. Aerial Banners Incorporated, the operator, is a South Florida aerial advertising company with a long history and not all of it positive. In 2007, the FAA revoked their waiver after multiple safety violations. Though their operation was later reinstated, the company has been linked to at least four serious accidents between 2014 and 2023, including a fatal crash into a condo building in 2019. While banner towing is inherently risky, the company's track record raises concerns about safety culture, oversight, and the adequacy of pilot training in demanding conditions. The flight of November 430 Alpha Bravo began routinely. At 12.29 p.m., the aircraft successfully snagged the banner on the second attempt. But shortly afterward, air traffic control noticed something unusual. Banner 0 Alpha Bravo, everything okay? You're descending rapidly. That's right, I keep it climbing. That was the first clue. The Piper PA-25 Pawnee was struggling, losing altitude instead of gaining it, even though it had just begun the banner tow mission. The pilot's response wasn't panicked, but it wasn't confident either. It was the voice of someone realizing, in real time, that the airplane wasn't performing as expected. Banner Zero Alpha Bravo, are you okay, sir? I'm showing you at 600 feet now. Yeah, I'm good now. Zero Alpha Bravo, starting to climb. Banner Zero Alpha Bravo, roger, and frequency change at your discretion. Fort Lauderdale's on 20.2. 20 20.2, 20 Zero Alpha Bravo, thank you. For a moment, it sounded like things were under control but the aircraft was still flying too low, dangerously close to stall speed. The next transmission brought it back into focus. Fort Lauderdale Tower Banner 430 Alpha Bravo at 700 and uh, about two miles to the east of Military Airport uh, request display from Hollywood to Commercial Beach. 700 feet, barely above treetop level for a banner flight. Still, the request was granted, but from that point on, Things unraveled fast. Three miles off tour at or below 500, banner 430 Alpha Bravo. Yeah, I might have to drop this banner. I'm not climbing. Is there upper bubble? That was the turning point. The pilot finally acknowledged the climb wasn't happening. The plane was trapped in a high-drag, low-speed regime, unable to gain energy, too nose-high, 
and nearing aerodynamic stall. The aircraft had fallen even lower. The pilot tried to find an open space. He mentioned oil tanks, a lake, anything to get rid of the banner and recover speed, but it was already too late. Yeah, I'm gonna be over these uh, oil tanks with a. Uh, there's like a lake next to it. One sec. That was his final transmission. There was no official emergency declaration, no panicked mayday, just a pilot caught in a deadly aerodynamic trap, still hoping he could salvage control by dropping the banner. But by the time he acted, the aircraft had already slowed beyond the critical angle of attack. The banner was jettisoned, but the plane spun left, stalled, and slammed into the street below, ending in flames. From takeoff to impact, just under 10 minutes had passed. After the investigation, the NTSB's final report confirmed what initial suspicions had already hinted. The aircraft itself was working just fine. There were no signs of mechanical failure. The engine, control surfaces, and airframe were all intact and functioning prior to impact. The real problem was how the Piper PA-25 was being flown. The crash was caused by a critical aerodynamic mistake. The pilot allowed the aircraft to exceed its critical angle of attack, triggering a stall and loss of control. According to the report, during the final four minutes of flight, the aircraft stayed between 400 and 600 feet and flew at around 55 knots ground speed, with some segments dipping as low as 48 knots, uncomfortably close to stall speed, especially with a large banner in tow. An 11-knot tailwind made things even worse, reducing effective airflow over the wings. Surveillance footage confirmed what radar and eyewitnesses saw. The aircraft was stuck in a nose-high, low-speed attitude, and when the pilot finally released the banner, far too late. The plane briefly rolled and yawed, then dropped in a vertical, nose-up descent before entering a sharp, left-spiraling spin into the ground. The pilot never regained control. The core issue was that the aircraft had entered the region of reverse command, a condition where flying slower actually requires more power, not less, to maintain altitude. Add the massive drag of a banner, and you get a performance trap. The only way to recover is to lower the nose to pick up speed, but that move is deeply counterintuitive when you're already at low altitude. The pilot, trying to climb, kept pulling the nose up instead, the exact opposite of what was needed. The company's director of ground operations, watching from below, also saw the problem unfold. He noted the airplane's nose was pitched far too high, making it physically unable to climb. Yet, no one, not the pilot nor the tower, declared an emergency. Even though the pilot radioed, I might have to drop this banner, I'm not climbing, he didn't act immediately. He flew past multiple open areas, public parks, school athletic fields, before finally attempting to drop the banner over a lake when the aircraft was already near stall. Adding to the concern, the pilot had only 15 hours in this aircraft model. While he had completed the company's training, he likely lacked the first-hand feel and muscle memory needed to manage a slow-flying, heavily loaded aircraft on the edge of its performance envelope. A former pilot for the same company reported that stall characteristics with a banner in tow were deceptive. The aircraft would remain nose up, descending slowly, giving the illusion of control until it was too late. He also noted that airspeed indicators could be off by up to 10 miles per hour, depending on how the aircraft's windows were configured, something rarely accounted for in practice. The training manual did warn of these dangers. It specifically stated that lowering the nose to gain 5 to 10 miles per hour might be the only way to climb, and that pilots should drop the banner and return immediately if they couldn't reach altitude. But on that day, none of those steps were taken. The NTSB's final verdict was stark. The pilot's exceedance of the airplane's critical angle of attack caused the aerodynamic stall and crash. All other elements, aircraft condition, weather, visibility, were not factors. It was a case of a young, minimally experienced pilot making the wrong choices under pressure, with no room left to recover. The crash of November 4th wasn't caused by weather, mechanical failure, or bad luck. 
it was caused by subtle aerodynamic forces and a moment of indecision. And because of that, it holds lessons every pilot and every operator should take seriously. First, the aerodynamics. Banner towing puts aircraft in a high drag, low speed regime that leaves no margin for error. When flying in the region of reverse command, it takes more, not less, power to maintain altitude. If a pilot tries to climb while flying too slow, the result is almost always the same, a stall. The only way out is to lower the nose and build airspeed, even if that means sacrificing altitude in the short term. It feels wrong, especially near the ground, but it's often the only move that can save the aircraft. Second, pilot training. The pilot had only 15 hours of experience in the Pawnee, not nearly enough to deeply understand the aircraft's quirks under load. Even though he passed the company's training program, it's clear he hadn't yet developed the instinctive judgment needed in marginal conditions. That's not a personal failing, it's a systemic one. Companies must ensure that new hires aren't just trained, they're mentored, monitored, and eased into high-risk operations. Third, emergency decision-making. The pilot knew he wasn't climbing, he said it aloud, but he waited too long to act, too long to drop the banner, too long to declare an emergency, too long to change course. Whether it was hesitation, inexperience, or pressure to complete the mission, that delay sealed his fate. In high-stakes flying, decisiveness is survival. Finally, operational culture. Aerial Banners Inc. had a history of serious incidents, including another fatal crash in 2019. While banner towing is inherently risky, repeated accidents raise hard questions about oversight, safety practices, and whether pilots are being set up to fail. The FAA and operators alike must take a closer look at how to make this industry safer, not just on paper, but in the air. In the end, the crash of November 4, 30 Alpha Bravo is a sobering reminder. Even routine flights demand full respect for aerodynamic limits. There is no room for overconfidence, no time for hesitation, and no substitute for experience. In banner towing, as in all aviation, the sky is only forgiving to those who understand its rules and act before it's too late.